Hello folks and welcome back to the electronics lab. So let's go see what we've got for you today. So what I've got for you guys today on the bench is the inverter out of a 2011 Nissan Leaf. Uh, this is the inverter that basically accompanied the motor that I purchased uh, late last year that we have currently installed in our E46 touring project. Now, initially uh, for the touring, my plan had been to uh, use the um, Lexus uh, inverter for that, but I've had a bit of a change of plans and I need that Lexus inverter for something else. So we are going to use uh, the Leaf inverter but in a slightly different way to what we normally would do in these situations with the OEM inverters uh, what I typically do is um, go in there and we you know we take the original logic board we reverse engineer this guy and we make our our own uh, control board for it um, that we then open source and sell and make millions of dollars selling this stuff. I am an absolute millionaire, guys. So, you know, I just do this for fun. Anyway, um, on this occasion, uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to attempt to use this as is. And how we are going to do that is by, uh, basically, we're going to connect up to the inverter and motor as per the wiring and diagram and as you can hopefully see here this is quite simple and then uh, we're going to go to a website here which I will show you uh, this website is or has been posted by a gentleman that has decoded the necessary CAN messages uh, to run the leaf inverter as is so we've got our connections we've got our can ids what the inverter sends what we need to send to the in inverter and so on uh, i will put a link to that website in the video description so you guys can go and have a look at it now the upshot of that is is that we now have the CAN messages that we need to get this inverter to work. Now, the website info is for a Gen 2 leaf inverter, but from looking at some of the CAN that this thing sends and looking at some of the CAN logs from my own 2011 leaf, uh, they look pretty much identical. So only time will tell whether we are making a big ass mistake here. But anyway, purpose of today's video is going to be wiring this thing up and uh, what I decided I would do is I would film this so that if if people um, you know need a little bit of help seeing how to wire the thing up then this video should be some use to you so looking at the wiring diagram it's pretty straightforward in that all we need to do is to give ourselves uh, permanent 12 volts, switch 12 volts, ground, can high, can low, and a connection here to the motor um, resolver and temperature sensor. So, you know, quite simple. We've got our diagram here with some connector pinouts here. Now, ideally, if you are lucky, you will have uh, the wiring plug that fits into this guy. This is the inverter um, signal plug and it normally sticks through this hole here, sticks out and we have a wiring plug that fits to this. Now, I didn't get the wiring harness with this inverter. If I had, you know, this would be a very simple case to just strip out the harness for the plug here and the resolver connector, get it all hooked up, 
you know, just give it the 12 volts and can signals and we'd be all set. But looking around, around eBay, uh, the cheapest I could find a wiring harness to do this was well over a hundred euros. So screw that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to chop this cable up here and uh, connect up the, si the signals that we need. I was lucky enough that the motor did come uh, with the resolver connector. So I've got a little bit of screen cable connected to that. And we'll identify which of these wires that we need to connect um, in order to be able to plug this guy into the motor. So without further ado, we will get stuck in for a very boring video, um, basically showing you how to, what colors and so on that you need to do if you're like me and you're a skin flint and you um, want to just, you know, connect directly to this guy rather than having to uh, buy a wiring harness. Alrighty, so first thing we need is the permanent ground and the permanent power now these two gray wires here are our permanent ground and in the connector uh, they equate two two and eight so they're our ground so what i'm going to do is going to snip them here i'm leaving the nuff on this connector so that if i ever did need to reconnect it to this i could I'm snip those two grounds Strip them off. Them together. We'll uh, get some solder on there. And pretty much, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm then going to come along and I've got myself a nice heavy duty wire here that I'm going to use as my main ground. Um, tin that wire up uh, in my vise here now, which you will see. you guys up. Oh, up would be a help. There we go. Then what we do is take our main ground wire and we just go ahead, blow that together. And then we have our brown wire here, which becomes our main ground. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll do um, I'll do the powers and the grounds and the can and I'll come back show you guys the colors uh, so that you'll have a record of that and then we will do the resolver you'll have all that and then we just do a bench test here power up and check that we have can alrighty folks so this is our vehicle harness this is what you need to connect from the inverter to the vehicle so these red and white stripe wires here are our permanent 12 volts gray ground orange here is our ignition on so we give this 12 volts when we turn the ignition on uh, the white red is can high and the green red is can low and that's it this uh these five wires here are pretty much all that we need to uh connect to the vehicle to control the inverter so the next thing that we need to do now is to connect the appropriate wires for the motor resolver and temperature sensor okay so this is our resolver harness wired up um, 
what we've got here is um, eight connections on the resolver plug. So sine and cosine exciter and motor temperature sensor go in here and they connect to eight wires on the harness as per this wiring diagram here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this and I'm going to call it out as well. So you'll be able to work out then uh, what needs to be done. So from right to left, pin 4 on the resolver connector goes to pin 31, pin 3 to 32, 6 to 27, 7 to 20, 8 6, 1 to 1, 2 to 35, and 5 to 34. Um, so this gives us these 8 here. So we're going to tape up those. So we'll then have our loom to go to the motor resolver connector, loom to go to the car, and we've got these spares here. I'm just going to tape those guys back. So let's do it. Okay, so um, what we've got is got our inverter on. Uh, we're feeding it some 12 volt power here now. Um, it's drawn just over half an amp. And uh, we are just got ground, 12 volts, my switched ignition, got a can Dewey on there uh, just for receiving can. Obviously, no motor connected at this time. If we go over onto the computer, we'll hopefully be able to see. We've got some CAN messages. We're seeing two IDs being uh, spat out there by the inverter. We have 1DA and 55A. So we are pretty good here. Uh, so next phase will be to put this in the car and then we are going to be coming up with a little um, Arduino shield that'll do things like take in throttle pedal and stuff like that and give me um, you know the can messages the torque commands that our inverter needs and we'll see if we can get it to turn the motor for us so that is about it for this particular episode today folks hope you've enjoyed uh don't forget to like share and subscribe check the links in the description for the the usual suspects patreon paypal github open inverter forum and there'll be a link there as well to the website with the nissan leaf uh can info so that's about it until next time. Happy leave inverter can message sending.